So our next example that we're going to look at is one with springs. So this is a really sort of basic example that we have to look at force and work. So work is the force that is required to do that work times the distance that you are doing that work on. So we'll look at in another video, you know, uh, pulling a cable up or, you know, or lifting, actually we're going to lift a crate or pumping water out of something. But another example of when we're doing work is if we have a spring and we want to compress it from its natural length. So what we do with the spring is we kind of set it up on an axis and its natural length that that spring wants to sit at, that's going to be our zero. And if we push it back and compress it, that's going to move it back to say like negative two position. because This is going to be at zero. And if we stretch it, like we're doing in the third picture here, that's going to move it say to positive three. <clears throat> so I'll talk about this spring that we have right here and kind of relate it to these pictures that we have. Sorry, my voice is a little craggly today. So a spring has a natural length of 20 centimeters and it and if a 25 newton force is required to keep it stretched to a length of 30 centimeters how much work is required to stretch it from 20 centimeters to 25 centimeters so there's a couple of things that are true about springs um, first they follow Hooke's law that says that the force required to move a spring is k times x so force is in newtons that's important to remember we'll see why here in a second and x is here going to be in meters this is our distance that we're moving it and so with a spring the force required to move that spring it's proportional to how far you're going to move it so like the further you want to move it the further you want to elongate it the harder it's going to be or the further in you want to compress it the harder it's going to be if you just want to move it a little bit it's not going to be that hard so in our example here what we want to do is take a spring that's got a natural length of 20 centimeters so what that means over here with our picture is that our zero right here, it's sitting at 20 centimeters. So here we are at zero. And it tells us that it takes 20 newtons of force to stretch it to 30. So if we pull this right here, and this is 30 meters or 10 meters from our start, because we started this sitting here at 20. And that's our zero position. So we've stretched it 10 meters. We can figure out from Hooke's law, Hooke's law knowing the number of newtons, right? there's our newtons, and how long we stretched it. We stretched it to 30 meters. And we can solve this for k. And this is going to give us, oh man, I'm looking at my notes here and I changed my example slightly so I need to grab a calculator really quickly so we've got 25 divided by 30 and we're going to get out of that oh, that's just going to be 5 6 is equal to k so this gives us for this particular spring so this is only for this particular spring this is the force oops again I can spell force force equation for this spring. Each spring we have is going to have a different force equation. So they're going to have to give us some information about, you know, how much force it takes to lengthen it or how much work's done to lengthen something. So when we have an object that has variable force, which is what this has, it takes more force to pull it further and further out or squish it further and further in the, that if we have that variable force, to figure out our work, we're going to have to find the integral because the idea is, is that we're going to have to take this, you know, if we want to stretch it from 20 to 25, right? So it's already, you know, it sits there at 20 and we want to take it five more. So we want it to go from zero to five. So we've got this spring here and we want to pull it 
like how much work it's going to take to pull at those five centimeters. It's going to take less work when we're closer here to the natural length than as we get closer and closer to that 25. So we've got to chop that up. And what we would look at is the force on a particular interval times how much we've moved it, which is delta x. And then if you look down here, that's how we're going to get our integral. Because if we take this and find the sum from 1 to n and then take our limit, we're going to get that integral. So back to our question up here, we need to answer how much work, how much work is, is required to stretch it from 25, from 20 to 25. So that's taking it from its natural length going out five centimeters. So we are going to have the integral from zero to five of our force equation and then dx. And so again, this is pretty straightforward integral that we can do. And we'll get 5 twelfths times 5 squared minus 0. And that's going to give us 125 twelfths. And this is going to be in joules. The work that we get is in joules. And I thought I had another example on here. I do not. That's it.